What's up, everybody? Hope you all had a great day. Listen, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I enjoyed the hell out of this episode of GH. I enjoyed every little second of it. It was interesting. It was entertaining. Stories were moving. Um, I ain't gonna lie to you. I had secondhand embarrassment for Carly <laughs> because I'm like, what made her think that she could use her credit cards? Her credit cards, debit card, what made you think that you could use anything associated with your bank account? It's like Diane specifically told her her assets were frozen. Why would you try to use a credit card? <laughs> like, why? And that lady going to sit behind the car, declined. I, that's when you just got to cover your face. You just got to be like. Because I hate when somebody does that. Like, they be all loud about it, declined. I'm like, you can not whisper? <laughs> like, we in a place full of people. You can't whisper and say that? And then Carly got the nerve to sit here and try to pull out another car or try this car. I'm like, ma'am, your your assets are frozen. <laughs> ma'am, they're frozen. It don't matter what platinum card, black card, gold card, gas card. It don't matter what card you pull out. EBT card, it don't matter. It's declined. That's what frozen assets mean, sweetie. That means everything connected to your banking, your your whatever. It's it's frozen unless you have cash on hand. Your stuff is froze. You cannot use it. You can't use no plastic. Um, I would have just, at that point, I would have just told that girl, I'm like, listen, my mama owned this place. Because don't Bobby still own the diner? I'm like, my mama owned this place. Like, let me get a piece of pie for free. I'm like, damn, you know you down bad when you can't afford a piece of pie and a coffee. <laughs> you just broke, broke. <laughs> and... It got even more embarrassing when Nina pulled up with her credit card. Like, oh, I got this. I said, no. <laughs> Not your enemy trying to buy your food knowing that you 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 down bad right now. And Carly having her, both her cards declined in front of everybody still was so smug. I'm like the smugness of this woman. Like Carly, mm, she don't give a damn how bad her life is going at, at, the, at the moment. Carly's still going to be smug and arrogant. She just don't care. Um, She ain't had to be... Like, the mere fact that all Nina asked her was, how was the wedding? She going to sit here, oh, Nell is this and Nell... <laughs> like, why are you going a whole tangent about Nell? All that lady asked you was, how was the wedding? <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, I felt I love that scene though between her and Nina because I just felt like the pettiness was on level ten with them. Um, cause Nina know exactly what she was doing when she pulled out that credit card to pay for her food. She knew what she was doing because you know good and well her assets are frozen. <laughs> um, and it was funny because when Ava asked her, "Oh, how was the wedding?" and Carly is still such a bitch. <laughs> But I, that shit had me laughing, though, because she was like, oh, the wedding was beautiful for those who were invited. <laughs> Listen, at this point, before I get into that, Carly had the nerve to sit here and get the phone call from Michael and not even tell Nina that Willow collapsed and she in the hospital. Like, you know how fucked up in the mind you got to be? You know how much you got to hate a person to do something like that, to not tell them that their child is in the hospital? Like, you know how freaked? You just got to be out your mind to do something like that. That's taking petty to a whole nother level. That is so vindictive. Um, I'm sorry, but at this point, it's time for Nina and Carly to fight. It's time for them to physically throw hands. I, I just feel like too much has been said. Too much has been done for them to not fight. Like the pettiness between <laughs> the pettiness between them is at an all time high. And it's just like, y'all need to fight. Yeah, I need to just go at it at this point. Um, I totally get where Ava was coming from. Like, Ava pretty much was telling Nina, like, listen, I understand you feel guilty or whatever for sicking the SEC on Drew too, but especially for him, you know, trying to help them get Liesl back, I get it. But I have to agree with Ava. It's like, you can either let the guilt paralyze you or you can just let it go and move the hell on because I do agree. It's like, at this point, what can you do? You already pulled the trigger. It's done. 
The SEC is investigating him now. So there's nothing you can do to take it back. You know what I mean? You can't, you, you, once you pull that trigger, you can't put a bullet back in the chamber again. It's, it's, it's already out there. It's done. Um, and if I was her, I wouldn't feel bad any damn way because it ain't like Drew out there actually doing no heavy lifting. Cause let's be real. We all watching this Greenland storyline and Drew really has not done anything in this story. Every, even every since they got to Greenland, he really hasn't done nothing. Valentin, Curtis, and Laura are the ones doing all the heavy lifting, all the thinking, sacrificing themselves, coming up with plans, fighting the guards. They're the ones doing all that stuff, coming up with all these plans and whatnot to topple Victor. They're the ones coming up with this stuff. Drew hasn't really come up with any ideas. Like, nothing. Like, all I think he did was knock out a guard, maybe attack a guard. That's all I seen him do. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, I ain't give a damn about Willa. <laughs> seeing her in that hospital bed I'm like okay we done seen this a million times like are you gonna die or what like what we doing <laughs> like is the Grim Reaper finally gonna come get you like I'm just saying the angel of death need to just go ahead and take her at this point cause I'm tired of watching her be sick and laid up in this hospital now talking about oh when I'm gone well when the hell are you gonna go you keep saying when you're gone but baby you still here like you you the longest death story I ever seen in my life <laughs> just say it Hell, I'll probably be 80 years old and she'll still be clinging to life on stage four. Like, good God. Just just take her already. Um, I love the scenes with Tracy, BLQ, and Wiley. Because, you know, Tracy was sitting there trying to tell that boy about the four little pigs. <laughs> he was like, oh, I thought it was the three little pigs. Listen, son, let Tracy finish the story. Because he better be lucky that she ain't call his other grandmother the fourth little pig. Because you know she wanted to call Carly a pig. <laughs> I can see it on her face. <laughs> I love Tracy. Like, Tracy brings such a different energy back to the show. It's like, I, I love it. Because she just speaks her mind. Um, and I love how BLQ was expect expecting Tracy to hold that, that chase situation over her head. But Tracy was trying to say, oh, no, I did it for you because, you know, you're my granddaughter. I did it for you. A part of me believe Tracy or wants to believe Tracy. But another part of me like, mm-mm, because I know Tracy M.O. I know how she is. Tracy has no problem with cashing in and blackmail or whatever, even on a family member. So I wouldn't trust her. I, I wouldn't go that far to trust her like that just yet. Um, I believe part of what she's saying, but mm -mm, it, it's something in it for her. I wouldn't put nothing past Tracy because half the time, majority of the time, she always got an agenda. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. So it's it's not looking good for, for Willow at this point. Like, TJ got the test results. It ain't looking good for her, but I'm like, I just wish that they would speed this up. Um, I swear, when Liz and TJ was talking and she was all grinning up in his face, like, Liz was cheesing like a Cheshire cat. I'm like, man, back up off of him. Liz, I like you now, but back, back up off of that man. He in a domestic relationship right now. Back up, back up off him. He got a domestic partnership. Leave him alone. <laughs> Because the way she was looking at him, I'm like, why are you cheesing so hard at him? Liz, leave him alone, please. He's taken. Go find you somebody else. I know Finn is boring, but you need to go find you a young strapping gentleman because that one is taken. So you need to let him go because Molly will fight you. <laughs> Molly might seem sweet, but she will she will cut him. She will cut you like you just back your little ass up. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, I cannot believe Robert done let that little WSB agent get the best of him. I'm like, damn, Robert, he even take that man mouth shut. <laughs> I'm like, Robert, you losing your step, brother, because if this was 10 years ago, Robert would have took him out. Um, You know, I can't believe that WSB agent try to, you know, come at Robert talking about, oh, you sat on this information and you didn't tell the WSB. I'm like, first of all, sir, he don't work for y'all no more, so he ain't got to tell you nothing. Um, I can't believe Frisco got removed, but I'm not surprised because that's, that's politics for you. That's that bureaucratic, bureaucrat, red tape, whatever they want to call it. You know, that's politics for you. That's, you know, that's that political shit. Um, of course, you know, Frisco wasn't going to bomb the island because people he know is on that island. You know what I mean? It's like, he's not going to do that to innocent people. But you know the WSB ain't got no problem with it. 
if it contains the pathogen and it could save the rest of the population, they was definitely going to bomb it. That's why I said Scott shouldn't have never called them. Um, so now the new director of the WSB want to bomb the damn thing. I said, yeah, Scott made a grave mistake doing that. He better hope that they can get everybody off that island before that shit blow up. Um, otherwise, some people's lives are, you know, blood is going to be on Scott's hand behind this now. Um, I love that fight scene. Like, Curtis was not playing. He was beating them guards' ass. Um, I love how Trina was not leaving Spencer's side whatsoever. Like, she didn't give a damn what Curtis was trying to tell her. Oh, you need to go. You need to go. Trina said, listen, my dude is down. I'm not leaving him. <laughs> she was like, I'm not leaving his side. They beat the hell out of Spencer. Um, you know, they got the baby back and they, they got on up out of there. I said, good job. Good job, Curtis. See, that's what I'm talking about. Curtis, you know, he, he did good. That's why I'm glad they brought him. I wish Taggart would have been there because I felt like both Curtis and Taggart should have been along. I honestly, Taggart could have went in place of Drew. He could have went in place of Drew. And before people come in my comment section talking about, oh, why did Drew hate? There is no hate. I'm just giving my opinion on him because I just feel like he did nothing for this story. Somebody else could have, you know, been better suited to be, you know, on this trip. Um, That would make more sense. And that would actually put in some work. Um, So anyway. Valentine is just the worst for the wear right now. Like, I felt bad for him. You know, like, the look on Laura's face when she seen that monitor and she seen Valentine. Like, I never thought Laura would actually give a damn about Valentine, but she really has come to actually care about that man to an extent. Um, But I'm going to tell you like this. With parents like Helena and, Val and, and Victor, you don't need enemies. I'm just saying. I was so happy to see my boo Helena, even though it was a hallucination of her. I was happy to see her. When Helena walked in that room, oh my God, let me tell you something. Constance looks damn good for her age. Like, I will say that about um, Constance Howard, but Helena, even as a ghost, is even as a hallucination, she gonna make sure her hair and makeup is laid. She gonna make sure her shit is done. Because she always looks so flawless. Like, even in death, like, that woman be looking elegant. And dressed to the nines and put together. I was like, well, damn, Helena. Um, but that woman is a bitch. <laughs> like, this boy is sitting here begging for her help, and she's sitting here talking about, oh, I didn't come to help you. <laughs> she said, I came you, I came here to bring you down to eternity with me. I saw hell no. <laughs> like, she is the worst. Like, I said, girl, you sitting here taunting this man even as a even as a hallucination. She she wastes no time taunting him. Um Victor is just the devil. Like, this man really don't give a damn. Like, he is really trying to kill his own son. Like, that is some devilish shit. Even Lisa was, like, begging to try to help Valentine. Like, Victor really done lost his ever-loving mind. I'm like, damn, Victor. Um, But I am glad that, you know, Laura was able to grab that, uh, that, that pathogen, though. I said, Lord, you need to just open that shit up and pour it all on him. You just need to pour it on that man because it's time for him to go at this point. Like, he 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 need to be brought down the sides real quick because I done had enough of little Victor. Um, But this episode was good. I enjoyed the hell out of this episode. Like, this episode made me laugh so hard. <laughs> it really did. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. Every little step of it. Um... Anyway, hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought about it. And I will see you all later. Peace.